Shalom, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to do a, a quick response to this video done by the um, brother Rakwaya Kwam. His YouTube handle is GMS Fear the Most High 7 Ba. All right, make sure you subscribe to the brother's page so that you be edified. The title of the video is The Flock of Yahawashai are from the Seed of Israel. All right, and uh, he's doing this video in response to a debate Vocat Malone was having uh, with a few other people. Um, go ahead and watch this video and be edified. Uh, I wanted to focus on one part of this video where Vocat Malone states that John the Baptist, okay, when he came onto the scene, he was calling uh, people to, as he says, Christ, opening up a multi-nationality blessing, okay, to where those who call on the Messiah, okay, uh, uh, are now accepted into the fold, okay, and we're going to get into John the Baptist's uh, duty and what he came to do to show you that this dude is a damn liar, because his premise is that the actual seed of Israel have been cursed Okay, and cast off by the Heavenly Father and the blessings no longer uh, uh, go to that seed, which are still here. All right. And how do we know that that physical seed is still here? Well, the sun's out. Okay, here in Texas and uh, uh, the sun is out. Okay, the moon was out last night. And according to Jeremiah, that's proof alone. That's all we need to know that the seed of Israel is still in the earth. All right. And when you read prophecy, there would be a remnant who would come, all right, uh, uh, back to the understanding of who they were, according to various prophecies, the dry bones in Ezekiel 37, okay, and that remnant would wake up to be what? Heirs to that promise that was given to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So what this, what this guy is saying is that basically the curses apply to the physical seed of Israel now that we've woke, uh, awakened up. Okay, when you get Deuteronomy 28, he's saying basically 15 through 68 apply to the physical seed of Israel. They're no longer blessed, even though Paul himself in Romans 11 says, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not say, uh, what the scripture say of Elijah, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and have digged down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what said the answer of God unto him? I have reserved unto myself 7,000 men of the nation of Israel who have not bowed to the image of Baal. Even so, at this present time, there is an, a remnant according to the election of grace. And that's what John the Rev uh, John the Baptist, okay, uh, 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 brought to the nation of Israel, all right, as he passed the priesthood to the high priest, all right, Hamashiach Yehoshai. And John's name means grace. We'll get into that, okay. So th this right here cuts you, and this is in the New Testament. There is a remnant of the nation of Israel according to grace, okay. And this seven thousand is symbolic of the one hundred and forty-four thousand men. OK, who are going to stand firm. OK, and through their message. All right. The remnant will come back to the heavenly father, man. OK, so right here, this cuts his doctrine. He's saying basically only the curses apply to the physical seed of Israel. OK, and now the blessings are opened up to all nations. And why does he say that? Because when you read the blessings, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it's ironic that they never told the 1948ers who are over saying that they are the chosen people returning to that land by promise. They never told them that the physical seed was cursed off and, and cast off and that they're making a mistake. They never dealt with them. They never called them out. But the, the minute we start to stand on our own and come back to the understanding of who we are, now Christians have went into the Bible. Now they're talking about the covenants. They're talking about the Edomites. They're going into this. They're going into trying to go into prophecy. And what we have found out, and this is a beautiful thing that this has all happened. What we have found out is that 
these people don't believe in the Bible. They are establishing their own narrative that they learned in seminary school, okay, which is against the promises that go to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you see, because you notice what these people do is that they try to hijack Abraham and leave off Isaac and Jacob and the 12 tribes, okay? And Paul himself, real quick, <laughs> spoke on that promise, okay? Let's see here. Acts 26 and 7, when he's speaking to Agrippa, he said what? Acts 26 and 6, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise God made to our, unto our fathers, unto which promise our 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come, for which hope sake, uh, hope sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews, you see, because those Jews, okay, that didn't accept the Messiah, that did not want to uh, uh, see those uh, Israelite foreigners come back into the fold, they had a problem, okay, with the Messiah's office, they had a problem with Paul's office, okay, and to go preach unto these scattered Israelites, and they wanted everything to be by the temple and by that first covenant, which was done away with. Okay, the first covenant was already broken. That's why the Lord had to make another covenant. But here you see that promise to the 12 tribes is still in effect. Now, why are they so against the true Israelites getting that blessing? Why are they saying that the blessing no longer applies to the true seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Because Deuteronomy 28 and 1, when you read the blessings... This is what it says, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. You see that? And as you read it, it talks about how we, we would uh, uh, rule over our enemies, uh, how, uh, you know, as you read here, it says we shall lend unto many nations and shall not borrow, okay, that we would be above the heathen, man. And they don't want that to happen. They don't want to hear us going into, well, these, these blessings apply to us. So what they go to do is to establish madness using witchcraft, even dealing with Jacob when he got his blessing from Isaac. Let's get that in Genesis 27. Genesis 27 and 28, this is when Isaac blessed Jacob, all right? Therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. And that's going to happen under the Messiah, who's going to bring all 12 tribes together. That's his duty, both northern and southern kingdom, and he will sit on the throne of David, all right? This is what was told to Jacob. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. See, they don't want to deal with this blessing because look what it entails. And they know that within that blessing, they're going to get the short end of the stick and they will be the tail and we will be the head. See, they wanted to stay. They love when we were the tail. But they want to keep that curse on us. <laughs> All right. But see, Yahweh delivered us from the curse of the law. All right, and gave us grace to be ushered into this new covenant, which is only for the Israelites, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Be Lord over thy brethren. Okay, the Edomites, let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. So here, within Jacob's blessing, we see that he will be bowed to, all right, by the Edomites, by all of these different nations. Curse be everyone that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blessed thee. This was the promise given to Jacob. This cannot be altered. And as the scriptures say, it's immutable. You see, the, the immutability, all right, of the Heavenly Father's counsel is what these people seek to destroy in pride. Let's listen to a little bit of this. And then we will get into the scriptures as concerning John the Revelator, because his thing is that 
when John the Revelator came on the scene, he's preaching and baptizing heathen to come to the Messiah, separating everything from the temple and everything else. And we'll show you that this is a damn lie. Of it in this verse, have these promises. This is why the new covenant people of God draw near to Christ, per John 6, and don't draw near to Jerusalem, per John 4. I reiterate, the Bible teaches there is only one people of God, the Ecclesia. God's people can be prophet. If that's the case, then what, what's the whole holy Jerusalem thing going on in Jeremiah, the 21st chapter? Are you trying to say Jerusalem don't matter now? I don't understand what he's doing here. Or maybe someone can explain it. It's just my defined as a worshiping community united to the one true God via the work of Christ and the sealing of the Holy Spirit. Community belonging is not based on genetics. It's based on Jesus. By the way, it never was. <laughs> We're gonna find out. Got... Based on genetics, Sorry. as we can see from those who called upon the name of the Lord prior to the patriarchs, or from the ministry of Melchizedek, and of course from proselytes who joined themselves to the Holy One of Israel. In fact, Jesus Christ is. Okay, so these he if a heathen decides that they want to worship the Most High, does that does that give them give them um the same inheritance? This new community is the multinational ecclesia. Watch, watch this. Matthew 2, 1 through 12. Oh, you heard so basically he's saying the new community, uh, okay, um, starting with John's ministry, were heathen. So let's go into the Bible and just see exactly how this all plays out and how this works. And we're going to break it down, Lord willing. And for further uh, edification, go and watch this video. The brother went in. Great video. All right. Um, now, this is Luke, the first chapter. OK. Dealing with uh, John, the Baptist father, Zechariah. OK. Now, Zechariah's office in Luke, the first chapter, the ninth verse, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Now, what does this tell us? This tells us that Zechariah was a direct descendant of Aaron, the high priest, because that was their office. Exodus 30 and 7, and Aaron shall burn sweet incense every morning when he dresses the lamps. And you had to be a direct descendant of Aaron to be able to have this office and shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighted the lamps at evening, he shall burn incense upon it a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. So what we find out about John the Baptist, okay, his father, okay, which means he, he was a Levite priest of the direct loins of Aaron. You see that? And in the first covenant, these high priests were the ones who were responsible for the duties of sacrifice, bringing the uh, children of Israel back to the heavenly father now according to the story that covenant had been done away with we had overused the sacrifice the lord was no longer accepting the sacrifice so when the messiah before he came on the scene there came john the baptist now let's read about john the baptist okay now speaking of his father give me one second here give me one second Speaking of his father, Zechariah, before he was born, before John the Baptist was born, it says, and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense, and there appeared unto him, because you have to remember, according to the history, you had those, all right, you can go back to the Maccabees, the Hasmonean dynasties, and eventually there was a lot of sellouts who kept the temple up after the sacking of the temple by the Greeks, all right, and then the Romans came into power, okay, you had a group of people who stood faithful to the temple, okay? And they had a problem and looked down upon Israel who were scattered, okay, following the customs of the Greeks and the Romans. They looked at them as a no people. They had no way back in. Okay, you have to understand these things before you go opening up the New Testament thinking you can go read the Bible. 
So there's an angel appeared to Zechariah, who's John the uh, Baptist's father. Okay. Verse 11, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth, okay, shall, shall uh, bear thee a son and shall call his name John. Okay, let's look up the word John. Okay. Let's look up this word. We know in the Hebrew is Yachanan, all right? Uh, Yachanan, all right? And what does it mean? Let's just go to it in the Hebrew. The Hebrew origin is Yahweh has graced. Yahweh has graced. Okay, now what is grace? Grace is a period for the Israelites where they're not directly judged by the law. That first covenant was done away with. John came to give us grace and to present Yahawashai. And let's prove it to the Israelites. Let's prove it. All right, Yahweh is a gracious giver. John the Baptist was the son of Zechariah by Elizabeth, the forerunner of Hamashiach. Uh, he was cast into prison, beheaded by Herod. And you can read all of that. And before we do that, I'm going to go to these scriptures because that was the thing, man. You know, under that first covenant, there was these set rules, the curse of the law, man. Yahweh Shai delivered us from the curse of the law, man. Okay. John 1 and 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. You see? Then you go into these scriptures dealing with, with, with grace, man. Okay. Romans 6 and 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law. You're not under the first covenant. We're not yet under the second covenant. We, the Israelites, are under grace. So shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Vocab and the Christians teach you. That because we are under this grace period, because we're not fully judged by the law, we were delivered from the curse of the law. Let's just sin. You see, and this was the back and forth. This is what caused so much friction between those of the circumcision who were raised and cultivated in the ways of the law and those of the uncircumcision who will receive contrary. OK, to being perfect in the law. This is what the whole Bible was about, the Israelites, man, how they would be brought back to the Heavenly Father. Right now, we are under a grace period, man. And you had those who wanted to reject that and say, no, it's still by the first covenant, which they already broke it. So these are the things you have to understand before you go opening your mouth, talking about you're some biblical scholar. You don't know the Bible, man. You may know a few scriptures, but you ignore the whole volume of the book, which is why you're being confounded and confused. So the angel, okay, before John the Baptist was born, told Zechariah that thou shall have a son and thou shall call his name John. There's heavy things happening right here. You have to understand the history. You have to know what the hell you're talking about before you go try to break down Matthew and John and the new covenant and all of that. Okay. And thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Okay. He was a Nazarite and he shall be filled with the Holy spirit, even from his mother's womb. Now, did this mean that he didn't have a father because he was uh, born of the Holy spirit? You see, why was he born of the Holy Spirit? Because you have to remember in the book of Malachi, it was prophesied and promised that he would come. And let's prove it. It says, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Where does this say he opened it up to all of the heathen? But there's more. Okay. So many of the children of Israel with John the Baptist turned to the Lord their God. Now, according to this guy, 
John came and opened up a multi-nationality church ecclesia calling out. He called out to all the heathen to be baptized and get ready for Hamashiach, Yahawashah. Now we can see here that that's a damn lie. Okay? And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, which the Messiah told us himself that he was Elijah. So do 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 we make void the words of Yahweh Shai? That's what they do. Okay? This is Elias. Let's get that. This is what the Messiah said in Matthew 11, the 14th chapter. And if ye will receive it, this is Elijah, which was for to come. And that's prophesied in the book of Malachi, the fourth chapter. And what would he do? Verse 17 in Luke 1 and 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. What fathers? <laughs> and what children? And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepare for the Lord. Because at this point, all people knew was the temple, the first covenant, the temple, the first covenant. This was the beauty of John the Baptist, who was a direct descendant of Aaron, who could have boasted in his position, who could have boasted in being in the temple. He went to the wilderness and preached and made ready the way for Yahawashai. You see, so to say he ain't in the truth, ISUPK, you have a mark on your back. And the Heavenly Father, when he deals with you guys, man, you Tazariok and the rest of you niggas, man, we go light Palo Santo and have a party, man. Now, we're calling you to repent. Repent from that madness. John the Baptist is not in the truth. There's no fear of the Lord amongst you niggas, man. But anyway, John the Baptist's job was to prepare the Israelites to return to the Messiah, to turn to the Messiah who would be the high priest. Because that first covenant, which Aaron and the high priest, the, Levitic, the Levite priest, were, were, were doing the duties of the temple, that covenant was done away with. This is why when Yahawashai died on the cross, the temple veil split, okay? Meaning now all 12 tribes have access back to the Father and can go into the Holy of Holies and be priest, all right? Now it says, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children in the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared unto the Lord. Now, vocab's argument is that he came in the spirit of Elijah, you know, right? Well, let's let's read about Elijah. All right. And the Apocrypha, which your John Calvin <laughs> said he was edified by. Now, this is the book of Sirach 48 and 4. O Elijah. How was thou honored in thy wonderful, de wondrous deeds? And who made uh, glory like unto thee? Now it goes into his works. All right. And it said he anointed kings to take revenge and prophets to succeed after him. <laughs> All right. Who was taken up in a whirlwind of fire and in a chariot of fiery horses. Okay. He got beamed up. Verse 10. Who was ordained for the reproofs in their times to pacify the wrath of the Lord's judgment, okay? And this is what he was set up to do, to restore all things, man. Remember, at the time of his birth, those who were keeping the temple, all right, only spake and were in the mind frame of that first covenant. What he came to do was to open up and prepare the way for the new covenant which the high priest, instead of just the sons of Aaron, which he directly was, all right, it would be Yahawashai, all right, which would open it up for all 12 tribes eventually. But we'll get to that. It says, who was ordained for reproofs in their times to pacify the wrath of the Lord's judgment, all right, before it break forth into fury and to turn the head the heart of the father and to the son and to restore the tribes of Jacob. And that's what his job was. 
okay? Luke 1 and 17, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, which he was Elijah, the Messiah told you that was him, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord, which were Israelites. That's what his job was. That's what he was prophesied to do. Malachi, the fourth chapter. Behold, in the fifth verse, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he came back in this time to restore all things. Okay? Before that great and dreadful day, he would send us Elijah the prophet. Okay? Which when John came, he was Elijah coming back, showing you reincarnations in the scriptures, but you all don't want to believe it, even when the Messiah tells you it was him. This is Elijah if you can receive it. See, you can't receive it because you don't have the ears. And what was Elijah going to do? He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Going back here, he was ordained. All right, Sirach 48 and 10, for the reproofs in their times to pacify the wrath of the Lord's judgment before it break forth into fury and to turn the heart of the father to the son and to restore the tribes of Jacob. Okay, because although there was a mind frame, all right, of that first covenant, the temple, there was a remnant who were going to follow the Messiah when he came. He prepared the way for the Messiah, man. Okay, when you read Acts, <laughs> let's get uh, Acts 13 and 23 of this man's seed, speaking of David, have God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Yahweh Shai. When John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. So John was baptizing only Israelites. His preaching was only to Israelites. And as John fulfilled his course, which he had his course, man, what was his course? Okay. To prepare the way, man, which that was prophesied in various scriptures, not just Malachi. He fulfilled his course, preparing and preaching to the children of Israel repentance. He was baptizing them. All right, which was symbolic of what the uh, uh, Yahawashai would do internally. Okay, that first covenant and the 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 the, the uh, lamb that was a uh, sacrifice or the turtle dove or whatever under that first covenant, it didn't internally cleanse you. So we had to have an upgraded priesthood. <laughs> All right. So when John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me. All right. One after me whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. You see that? <laughs> You see that? And vocab is no longer about Jerusalem. That's what we're going to rule out of. It's no longer about the first covenant for the Israelites to return unto the Heavenly Father, man. Now let's get this. Let's see here. Let's see here. Shoes worthy. Yep. In the book of Mark. Okay, in the book of Mark, because as John was baptizing, we just showed you he was baptizing the Israelites, man. Okay, let's see here. Man, this is a, the, we'll start at one, Matthew 3 and 1. And in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea which at this time was a province and a vassal to the Roman Empire, but you had those keeping the temple, okay? And saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
All right. Nobody else was saying this. John came onto the scene. He's a direct descendant of Aaron. What would you expect him to do? Boast in the temple. But he did something different, man. He went to the wilderness and preached to Yahweh. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by Isaiah, the prophet, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Where can you find that? I believe it's Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Okay. Yep. Isaiah 40 and 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight the desert and the highway of our God. And this is speaking of Israelites, man. Jerusalem, Zion. <laughs> you see, but they don't want to deal with that, man. Read that whole chapter. He's dealing with Israel being restored, man. So the people that the Heavenly Father is dealing with are the Israelites, man. It's just how would they get back to him if that first covenant was done away with? John came to introduce that way. All right? So this was he who was prophesied of Isaiah. This was he who Malachi said would come. This is he. Okay? And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle, just like Elijah, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out him to then went out to him uh, Jerusalem and all Judea and in all the region round about Jordan. These were Israelites and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. See that? Now the scribes and Pharisees who didn't want to uh, accept this, they were pissed off. Like, who the hell are you? to baptize, you know, and do this and do that. Let's read it. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? All right, because that's what he was set up to do. He was set up so that that remnant can come back, okay, so that they wouldn't be destroyed fully. That's why the Lord said, except the heavenly father have left us a small remnant we would have been as sodom and likened unto gomorrah so before that great and dreadful day john came and turned the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers through yahweh bring forth fruits meet for repentance and think not to say within yourselves we have abraham to our father for i say unto you that god is able to raise these stones up all right, as children unto Abraham, all right? And now, and, and, and vocab uses this to say that this cuts off the promise from the 12 tribes of Israel. What in the hell are you talking about, man? We got more, because there's more in Luke. <laughs> and now also the ax is laid unto the, foot, the uh, root of the trees, and therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth a good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That's of the nation of Israel. And they weren't bringing forth fruit. They were stuck in that old covenant and played out. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. And that's what that first covenant did. Peep this. Because remember, the, 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 the high priest would have to wash themselves with water. You know, they would enter into the Holy of Holies to, on the Day of Atonement to offer up sacrifice for their own sins and for the sins of Israel. All right. Well, there was a new way coming, man. But he that cometh after me is mightier in thy than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He's showing humility. All right. Which none of those high priests, scribes, Sadducees, said they didn't do it. They were high minded in the law. They were making laws within laws, looking down upon uh, those Israelites who were, had infirmities, leprous, lame, halted, blind. Remember that that was not accepted under that first covenant. You couldn't come into the temple if you were lame, halted, blind, leprous. Okay? He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. 
okay? <laughs> and as you read down, then come Yahawashai, okay? Unto Jordan, unto John, to be baptized of him. This was John passing the priesthood to Yahawashai. But John forbade him, saying, I need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Yahawashai answering him, now these are all Israelites there, man. And Yahawashai answered unto him, said, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. What had to be fulfilled? The priesthood had to be upgraded. So what John is doing here, then he suffered him, and Yahawashai was baptized. All right. When he was baptized, went straight up out of the water and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him and a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You see that? That's why Solomon's name by Nathan the prophet was Yayadya. All right. Beloved of the most high. All right, but that's another lesson for another time. So what happened here is for the Israelites, there is a, a new priesthood. Okay, now the high priest is no longer uh, 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 the, the Aaron and the sons of Aaron. Okay, let's type in high priest. In the book of uh, uh, Hebrews. Now the high priest is Yahawashai. See? As a matter of fact, let's look up one that has Aaron's name. Uh, yep. Man, it's so much. Let's see if Aaron's name. Yep. Yep. Let's see. I'm going Speaking of the first covenant, Hebrews 9 and 1. Then verily the first covenant also had uh, ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. It talks about the tabernacle, okay, the shoe bread, all right, Aaron's rod, okay. Uh, uh, the high priest had to go every year, all right. Let's see here which stood only in meats and drinks and read it, read it on your own and carnal ordinances. See the carnal ordinances was why John was baptizing with water. That was the carnal ordinance. But what Yahweh was coming to do was to inwardly cleanse you. Something that the first covenant didn't do because you had to continuously offer up those sacrifices. You had to, when you offered up the sacrifice of the goat, the bull, the, the lamb, the turtle, you, you still sinned imposed on them until the time of reformation but Hamashiach being a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle which is why the heavens opened not made with hands that is to say not of this building so it was no longer about that physical temple that all of those high and mighty Sadducees, Pharisees and so, so forth boasted in neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the peering of the flesh, which is what John baptized with water for to show you that that first covenant, yeah, it cleansed the outwardly. How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge you from your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of a new testament, a new covenant that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions of them that were under the first testament. Wait a minute. How the hell did John the Baptist open up a multinational uh, nationality covenant? No, he gave, a, through him we have grace, okay, Yahawashai gave us grace, and now, all right, we can offer up a sacrifice to be accepted into the new covenant, which Christians say that we're already under the new covenant, but then they'll eat jellyfish, pork, tell you you can do what the hell you want to do, 
And what does the new covenant entail? That the laws will be written in your inward part, the Israelites. So the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. And you could keep reading. Just as Moses sprinkled the blood over the Israelites, now the blood of Yahawashai, okay, is 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 sprinkled on the Israelites, man. We type in Aaron. There's another one in Hebrews. See if I can find that one real quick. Here we go. Hebrews 7 and 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there for another priest who should arise after the order of of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron for the priesthood being changed there is also made it a necessity all right of a change also of the law you see because when you read the scriptures it tells you that your lawgiver in Genesis Genesis 49 it tells you that the lawgiver Genesis 49 and 10, a scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and to him shall the gathering of the people be. It wouldn't be through the Levite priests. It would, the gathering of all 12 tribes in the kingdom of heaven will be under a lawgiver that will come out of Judah. You see? So there had to be an upgraded priesthood. <laughs> Oh, man. And you could read it so much more. Uh, Hebrews 7 and 22. By so much was Yahweh made a surety of a better testament, a better agreement. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. None of those high priests under that first covenant died, okay, and returned to the right hand side uh, uh, or, or rose from the dead. And then uh, uh, ascend it back to the right hand side. Only Yahweh did that. But this man, because he continued forever, have an unchangeable priesthood. <sighs> man, bro. Man. Verse 26. For such an high priest came, became us, who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the peoples who the Israelites for he did this once when he offered up himself he did this once <laughs> so going back real quick to the book of Matthew this is what happened here John never opened up a multinationality covenant. He changed the priesthood from Aaron, could have been Aaron, right? Over to the Messiah. He was a direct descendant of Aaron, as we showed you earlier in this video. His father was the high priest who had the order to burn incense the sons of Aaron were to do that so John his his office was very important for us because he all right it had to be fulfilled man okay let's get John the third chapter John 3 and 23 and John also was baptizing in uh Anon near to Salem because there was much water there and they came and were baptized and we already showed you that he was only baptizing Israelites, man. He was telling the Israelites to repent. For he was not yet cast into to, to prison. Then arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. See? Because remember those high priests would have to purify themselves and all of this. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, speaking of Yahweh, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come unto him. And John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given unto him from heaven. 
ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Messiah because the Messiah was to come. That's the whole Bible is about the Messiah to come and, and deliver the nation of Israel. That's why when Luke, and when you read Luke, the first chapter, Luke, the first chapter, as we read about John, uh, 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 and many of the children of Israel, verse 16, shall he turn to the Lord their God. As you read down, this is what John, John's father said once he understood everything. Luke 1 and 67. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who have visited and redeemed his people and have raised up a horn of salvation for us, in the house of his servant David. You see that? Contrary to the the the, the uh, sacrificing of the goats and the lambs and all of that, now we have a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice, an everlasting sacrifice. But we have to make our bodies a living sacrifice in this grace period, which is a gift, which is a gift unto the nation of Israel to be brought into that second covenant and raised up in horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which vocab alone and Christians don't want to deal with the prophets which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from all that hate us <laughs> but here it is he's telling you all of the nations are now granted into the covenant, into the fold by John. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us and to perform the mercy promised unto our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore unto our father Abraham, that he would grant us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemy enemies might serve him without fear. Just like in Exodus, what did the Lord tell Moses to tell Pharaoh? Let my people go that they may hold a feast and serve me. You see, the same thing is happening here. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. And to give knowledge of salvation unto the people for remission of their sins. All right. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high have visited us to give light unto them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. Where the hell is all people at in this? His showing was into Israel, Jack. So going back to John, the third, third chapter, which this is the same chapter that they use. God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But they don't read verse 14 to say, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. And what was that serpent in the wilderness lifted for? Numbers 21 and 8 real quick. I start at 7. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned because they were getting bitten by snakes. So the Lord had, you know, had them get jacked up. Israel, right? For we have spoken against Yahweh and against thee. Pray unto Yahweh that we take, that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed to the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it up on the pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he look upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any, when he had beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So that serpent in the wilderness was lifted up for the children of Israel to look upon, to be forgiven for their sins. So as the son of man who was lifted up as that serpent was lifted up. The son of man will be lifted up, man. Okay. <laughs> so 
John 3 and 14, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. <laughs> he was lifted up for the Israelites to look upon, to go to, so that they can be forgiven for their sins. Just like that fiery serpent. That's where John 3, 16, so God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. The son of man was lifted up. For the children of Israel, man. Let's see here. John 12 and 34. The people answered him, we have heard out of the law that the Messiah to buy forever. And how says thou that the son of man must be lifted up? Who is the son of man? Shahawah Shai, man. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. The son of man was the one that would be lifted up for Israel. But going back to the point, so I'll go ahead and end it. I'm going to get a few more points. Um, John, as he's baptizing, they came to him asking this question. Okay. And what was the question? Verse 26 in John 3. They came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, Yahawashai, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come unto him. And John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given from heaven. Okay. And ye yourselves bear witness that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoicing greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase and I must decrease. The first covenant, the priesthood of the first covenant decreased. Yahawashai, okay, who was the new high priest, and he always was in the heavens is going to increase so the 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 first covenant is done away with you see now there's a upgraded way that the israelites will be brought back to the heavenly father man and it's so and, and, and it's in the bible <laughs> hebrews 8 okay and 6 but he but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by he how much he is the mediator of a better covenant you see which was established upon better promises for if that first covenant had been faultless then should no place have been sought for the second for finding fault with them he said behold the days come except the lord when i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah where are the other nations in this? And this is what they continue to ignore and try to act as if, you know, and talking all these big words, but you ain't saying a damn thing, Jack. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their inward in their hearts and I will be unto them a God and they shall be unto me a people and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord for all shall know me from least to greatest and they'll say all all who all of the house of Israel and the house of Judah which is all 12 tribes being brought back together which is the throne of David okay the throne of David which when you read Luke 1 in, in 31, it says, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth the Son, and call his name Yahawashai, and he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob, all twelve tribes, forever. Where in the hell are the heathen in this? You see? In his to his kingdom there shall be no end but at this time that you know uh, uh the messiah came on the scene before that john there were a lot of castaways man there were a lot of israelites who were in a very destroyed state 
and looked down upon and rejected by those high priests, those scribes and Pharisees, man. Now, vocab's thing is that the Lord done away with Israel. Well, he says it's because Israel rejected him. Well, Peter was an Israelite. He didn't reject him. Andrew was an Israelite. John 1 and 47. Yahweh Shai saw Nathaniel coming unto him and said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no gal. <laughs> you see that? So when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, he gathered those of the circumcision, okay, who were going to follow him because Peter and uh, Andrew were first followers of John, right? So they left from following John. And they took his advice and followed Yahweh Shai and various other men followed uh, uh, Yahweh Shai. And you had those who only knew about the baptism of John, but they had to be upgraded. But here's the thing. Here's an Israelite being accepted. So your narrative that when Yahweh Shai came, all Israel rejected him is a damn lie. Because you had various Israelites who followed him that were of the circumcision Okay, it's just that once he started to heal people, okay, and here's a uh, great example. He showed those disciples that followed him that those who are going to truly accept your message are the broken down, the lame, the halted, and the blind. Here's an example. This is right after he gave his speech and he gathered his disciples. Matthew 8 and 1, and when he was come down into the mountain, Great multitudes followed him because his fame was growing. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. Now, this is an Israelite. And let's prove it. Okay, because in times past, before Yahweh Shai came, this leper would have just been cast off like, hell nah, get out of here. It was a Gentile, right? He's, he's through. Saying, Lord, if thou wilt, Thou can make me clean. And Yahweh Shai put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And what did Yahweh Shai say? And Yahweh Shai said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way and show thyself to the priest, showing you that it was an Israelite. And offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. So this was an Israelite. These were Israelites who, we were, who he was healing because the Lord was showing, Yahweh Shai was showing his disciples, these are going to be the ones rich in faith, the lame, the halted, the blind, which under the first covenant, they were not accepted. Let's get this word lame. Lame. Le Leviticus 21 and 18 for whatsoever man he be that have a blemish he shall not approach a blind man or a lame man or he that have a flat nose or anything superfluous okay you can keep reading more if there be any blemish therein if it be lame or blind if have any uh, blemish thou shall not sacrifice so in that first covenant these th these sacrifices were rejected you see but under the second covenant, they're accepted. Okay? Let's see here. No, oh, no, it's a lucky. Lame. <laughs> Matthew 15 and 30. And the multitudes came unto him, having with them that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others and cast down at Yahweh Shai's feet, and he healed them. You see? Because it's an upgraded priesthood. These are Israelites that were rejected under that first covenant, looked down upon, cast away. But Yahweh Shai showed his disciples the ones who were blamed, blind, lame, dumb, maimed. These are going to be the ones who are rich in faith, and they were accepted back into the fold through their faith. Right? They were healed. Okay, and then at the time he descended back to the father, 
He sent down the Holy Spirit. And this is where Cornelius and the Gentiles came in because now they were accepted back into the fold. The Lord had prepared his disciples of who would be down with him. Those high and mighty niggas who kept the temple and the temple this and the temple that the first covenant, they rejected Yahweh Shai. And yeah, they were Israelites who rejected Yahweh Shai, but not all Israel rejected Yahweh Shai. Peter was an Israelite. Okay? Just tw all of them were Israelites. You see? But the lame, the blind, the, the maimed, and all of those were now, all right, being healed, which was something that was not done before that. They were just looked at as, ugh. So there's a lot of history you have to understand, okay? Um, and and this, this is proof that this is an Israelite because he told him to go show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded. Wasn't that something that was only supposed to be done under that first covenant? <laughs> but see, Yahweh Shai was showing his disciples, these are the ones that's going to be down with you, man. So when John said that, that that I must decrease, he was speaking of the priesthood and he must increase. Okay, he was speaking of Yahweh Shai as the high priest, Isaiah 9 and 7, which had power to forgive sins, man. Isaiah 9 and 7 of the increase of his government. Okay, I'll start at uh, 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, the priesthood. Okay, because what's set on Aaron's and his son's shoulders, the 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 you know the ephod and everything else. Okay, with the twelve stones, man. So the government, which is all twelve tribes, is going to be on the shoulders of Yahweh and his name shall be called Wonderful, the Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government. See, this government is going to increase in peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this, man. You see, and when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, man, you know, th th those hot, those scribes and Pharisees was like, why are you eating with publicans and sinners and all of that? Because they were looked at as sellouts and through and Gentiles, right? So Yahweh Shah was showing the disciples that the Gentiles are going to be the ones who I'm going to deal with because these niggas are too high and mighty. Uh, uh, we low, we turn to the Gentiles and all of that. But that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time because that had to be fulfilled when he went back to the right hand side of the Heavenly Father, okay, and, and, and sent down the Holy Spirit. But we'll get into that at another time. But I just wanted to touch on a few things dealing with John and dealing with the new covenant and, and everything else, man. The flock of uh, the, 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 the Israelites are the ones who are going to receive the promises, the covenants and everything else. Just as Paul says, man, it's not open to the other nations. You are lying and your doctrine is being cut through the Holy Spirit. More to come. Hopefully I will edify Shalom.